So Aquinas makes the argument that God exists from both scripture and from philosophical reasoning and in a complicated way, but a coherent and deep way. So from the biblical point of view, the first thing that Aquinas notes is that God reveals himself. Uh, he reveals his identity to the ancient people of Israel under the divine name, incidentally, of Exodus 3, 14 and 15, I am he who is. That God is the creator who exists in a sovereign, necessary and eternal way that's mysterious and you might say ineffable, incomprehensible. And that God has given us being as a gift, that God is the creator, that he's generated or created things from nothing. Uh, so, also God has revealed himself through the Incarnation by becoming human and revealed his inner life as Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is a numinous mystery of the eternal communion of persons in God that we can know, but also in a certain way experience and partake of through the life of grace, that we can have a, not just personal relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but a kind of a spiritual, intimate encounter, mystical communion with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with the Trinity. Now you might say, well, that's so ambitious a claim, so profound a claim spiritually, that were it true, then the philosophical quest for God would be unimportant or superfluous. But Aquinas says, actually, the scriptures themselves have also revealed that human beings are meant to know God naturally and philosophically. So, for example, in the Book of Wisdom, in the Old Testament, in the Catholic Bible, it's an ancient Greek, uh, Jewish text, that uh, speaks of uh, the fact that we can come to know God by analogy from the likeness of created things, that the things that exist uh, made by God the Creator are in some way like God, and so from their perfections, say their existence, goodness, and beauty, we can come to know that there is a transcendent being and goodness and beauty that has given, uh, given the world its existence. And St. Paul in the letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, famously talks about the fact that all human beings can come to know that God exists by the things that he's created and come to admire the sublime power and wisdom of God who's given all things their existence. So Aquinas then says, look, there's a kind of theologically mandated or in a way theologically stimulated vocation of the intellect to come to know God philosophically. Now, when we come to think on the other side of the coin, as it were, how do we come to know God philosophically? Aquinas says, the natural knowledge of God originates more primally from our natural experience of the world, and particularly from the knowledge of philosophical principles in reality. Principles, that's a word from Aristotle. It means something first in the reality, something that structures the reality so that you understand its deep unintelligibility. So, for example, Aquinas thinks that every human being, or every living thing really, has a certain principle he calls the soul, or the organizational principle of life that gives it vital unity and organization from within as a dynamic biological system. And matter, the physical material elements that are uh, given their structure and dynamic orientation, by the principle of life or the soul. That doesn't mean that all living things are immaterial or immortal. It just means there's a kind of vital principle or a living principle in them that's different from a non-living thing. But the point is, once you understand the soul and body principles, which he investigates philosophically, you begin to understand living things more deeply. Well, okay, so in philosophy we're looking for the principles of things, and through knowledge of those we can begin to see the problematic of God emerge, you might say organically, for the human intellect. And so, for example, there are principles like form and matter in general, in all things that are physical, that raise questions of the existence of God. Form is the sort of natural determination in, thing, in a thing, say like a diamond, or in a tree, or in a water molecule. You have a kind of essential nature, and then it's an essential nature in a material substrate or in a kind of stuff, the, the physical elements, material elements, in and through which the form is materialized. Well, if there's a form matter constitution in all things, which is a debatable philosophical point, but if that's true, then there's a kind of uh, 
limitation in everything wherein it's materially dependent upon others that cause it to change or emerge through the physical order of nature. And there's a kind of independence or autonomy and identity in each thing. So like the diamond has an autonomy, but it also has, you might say, a history of emergence. The water molecule has an identity and an essence, but it also has a history of emergence and dependency. And this is true for every physical thing. And so then you can see how philosophically it begins to you know, emerge the question, well, is everything material? Is everything physically dependent on change and natural flux? Or is the natural order of material changing things itself um, in some way uh, a, a huge web or network of dependent things that raises the question of the existence of God? So Aquinas argues in this way from various philosophical experiences that the principles of nature and the principles of metaphysics, of the structure of reality, um, give rise organically or naturally to the question of the existence of God. So if you put these two elements together, on the one hand, you might say the sort of direct way to God is that God has revealed himself as he who is to the prophets and to the world through the scriptures and the church so that we know that God is the creator of all things and we can know the creator personally in God's own intimate life through the life of grace, through our invitation to know God through Christ and in the Holy Spirit. And that's the more, you might say, direct mystical passage through faith and it's real but it doesn't do away with our natural organic questioning of reality that can lead us through the consideration of nature and the principles of nature to uh, a, a kind of a normal curiosity about God and the sacred that can eventually terminate in rigorous philosophical demonstration of the existence of God and these two ways of knowing God are harmonious and can coexist and in fact complement one another <music>